Hey guys, so welcome back to Persona 4 Golden. Let's carry on where we left off. It's Friday afternoon and it is raining. So there's not a lot we can do, but what we can do is apply for that part-time job. Now that our understanding has reached saintly status, we are comparable to Mother Teresa at this point. Although I must say that uh, I've heard some bad things about her, so I don't know if I want to be compared to Mother Teresa these days. Uh, before we go though, let's check our shoe locker. This is your shoe locker, there's nothing inside. If there was, I'm sure you could go probably stole it. <laughs> Didn't want anyone else giving me anything. Uh, I haven't seen you in a while, sir. You're only around when it's raining, I think, as well. Man, transfer dude. How did this happen? My pranks are my pride and joy. But I got so distracted by Rosette in the swimsuit that I missed my chance to set one off. That should be against the rules or something, damn it! <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Who knew that Rosette in a swimsuit protected and saved the school? from a big prank during the culture festival. All right, even though I was qualified for this job a long time ago because of my impressive knowledge, I guess I needed to be able to empathize with whoever I was tutoring. There are several job openings posted. Which one do you want to read at long last? Let's apply for the tutoring job. 10,000 yen, high understanding. Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday boosts your expression. Take this job, yes. Someone made a good point that uh, because it's a night job, we actually Probably have a lot of time, or I don't know how much longer we have, but we, we've got uh, more time to pursue this than during the day uh, because of all the competition during the day. But at night, uh, I don't need to work at the hospital anymore, and Nanako and Dojima are done, so yeah. You feel that like your understanding is sufficient for this job, at long last. I understand that my understanding is enough. You've taken the tutoring job. Leave from the bus stop in the shopping district on Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday night. Which one do you want to read? Done looking. Who wants to get tutored on a Saturday night? I don't know. It's fine. Next protocol, the shrine. I have some unfinished business with the fox. Apparently I couldn't max out last time, even though I fulfilled every Emma available so far. This is the shrine's main building. What will you do? Call the fox. You made sure there was no one around and called for the fox. All right, buddy. I can't believe you're taking up another slot. You're lucky we've got an onslaught of rain incoming. The fox is trying to tell you something. Right, you might need to sign it or something. Your expression is enthralling, so you can understand the fox's feelings. Oh my gosh, another social link- uh, sorry, not social link- social stat check. It seems the fox is worried about the offertory box. Uh, why? What's wrong? You think no one else is gonna wish anything anymore because I fulfilled every wish in the town? Let's check it out. The offertory box is empty. Yeah, I think I've just done too good a job, you know? What happened to all the offerings collected by the fox? Alright, out of the way. Out of the way, I said! The construction crew came and began working. Excuse me? What kind of construction crew works during the de the during the during rain? <laughs> the offertory box and Tori are now made of glittering gold. Wow, wait. It seems the money the fox was saving up was used for this. <laughs> I wonder how that conversation went. It just strolled into the contractor's office, howled at him, drew up some blueprints, I suppose, by running around in a circle. Well, this place looks a lot more magnificent. God, you helped my friend when he needed you. Please, grant my wish too. I brought some of my allowance. The child threw in an offering. Are you happy, Fox? You've taken some of this kid's allowance. Ooh. Queue of people coming in during the rain. Oh, God. Grant her of our wishes. Please hear mine. I am listening. I am right behind you. I'll give you as much as you like. The lady threw in a large offering. Say, Fox, I haven't seen any of the coinage that these people have been depositing into these boxes. Though I suppose you were saving up for the upgrades to the shrine. I still would like to get paid for my work. Instead, all you offer me are discounts. Hmm. <laughs> I just watched the lady walk past me. It seems those who have heard of the blessings bestowed upon by the shrine have come to pay their respects. At this rate, the offertory box will be full in no time. Yep, it's a viable business model. The fox looks exuberant. No, no more. No, I'm done. I'm finished. Oh, is that your Emma? The fox went and picked up an Emma in its mouth. Obtained gratitude, Emma. Oh, well, thank you. I'll take it. The Emma has the fox's footprints all over it. 
It seems to be a token of the fox's gratitude. You feel an indescribable bond with the fox. All right. Maxed out with the hermit. You love to see it. Whew. Well, no, hermits are notoriously hard to bond with, right? Thou art I, and I am thou. Thou hast established a genuine bond. These genuine bonds shall be your eyes to see the truth. We bestow upon thee the ability to create Ongyo Ki, the ultimate form of the Hermit Arcana. I will never forget you, Fox. The Fox Social Link has reached its maximum level. You have mastered the Fox Social Link. Your power to create personas of the Hermit Arcana has reached its maximum. So Waku Senior has forged a bond that cannot be broken. By mastering the Hermit Social Link, you can now fuse ong yo Ki, the Shadow Dweller. That's an appropriate description for a Hermit. By reinforcing your bond, the Fox will discount the price of its services inside the TV. And they're still not free! Oh, it's fine. You know, you should always support your friends. Never ask your friends for free services. There you go. A discount is more than enough. The fox is radiating vigor. It will probably continue its work to revive the shrine. It's getting late. You said goodbye to the fox who looked somber and went home. Alright, take care, fox. Dad's late. Again. Did he forget his keys? I don't think that's him. I should probably get that, Nanako. Okay. Was it? It was the delivery man. He was asking where Mr. Takahashi's house is. Of course, Mr. Takahashi. I don't know where that is or who that is. Unless I'm missing something. Oh, goodness. Lots going on this evening. Hello. This is the Dojima residence. And I'm just sitting on my ass in front of the coffee table. Oh. Hi, Dad. Oh, hello. Uh-huh. All right. It's okay. I know it's your job. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Big bro's with me, so... Okay. Bye. Okay, bye. Dad says he's coming home tomorrow. Tomorrow? Wow. He's pulling an all-nighter? He didn't even want to speak with me. That's fine. I'll look after you. But I'm not lonely. You're here with me. Exactly. We can... Have fun this evening on a Friday night. Unfortunately, I think I do have school tomorrow, which kind of sucks, to be honest, going to school on Saturday. Nanako is smiling cheerfully. <sighs> it's cold today, too. Oh, well, let's get some blankets and bundle up, shall we? Or you we can put some trousers on or something. The kotatsu? Yes, let's pull out the kotatsu. Dad said we could pull it out if it gets too cold. Good. That'll make it nice and warm. Alright, I'll nod my head. Ah, that's the kotatsu. You pulled the kotatsu out from the closet. Okay, I'm turning it on. Oh, it turns on? Sorry, I don't know what a kotatsu is. But it sounds exciting. What? It's not coming on. It looks like it's broken. That's okay, you can bundle up in it, right? I've got my school jacket and everything. Nanako's disappointed. Aww. Let's get the best one. I am pretty rich. Huh? We can buy one? At you, Ness? Yeah, why not? Do we have to go this evening, though? Yay! <laughs> when you have some time, let's go to Juness. Yeah, let's go tomorrow if it's sunny. Oh, no, it's not gonna be sunny. It's gonna be rainy. Oh, well. We'll find some time. You promised to go shopping with Nanako. Midnight Channel Time. It's raining tonight. Something may appear on TV. What do we have? We have got a target. Someone appeared. Is that a woman? It's a silhouette. But it looks even blurrier than usual. You can't even tell what the what gender the person is. I think it looks like a woman. Here come the phone calls. Hey, did you see that? Yep. Looks like the killer's gonna be striking soon. It was really blurry, but you saw someone on the screen, right? Yeah, but who could it be? I don't think we've watched TV and seen who was on the screen lately. Damn it. Is there gonna be another kidnapping? Yep. Let's get 
get together as soon as we can tomorrow. The one just now was too blurry to jump to any conclusions. Hmm. But maybe someone has an idea of who it might be. We definitely need to talk. All right. Just remember to keep your schedule open tomorrow after school. That's fine. Since we're meeting at Junis, I can bring Nanako along and we can buy a Kotatsu while we're there. Yosuke hung up. Hmm. I wonder if he's calling the rest of the gang. You decide to go to bed. November the 5th. One more day of rain. I watched the Midnight Channel last night, as you suggested. Uh -huh. To think a master of deduction and evidence would strain her eyes over an urban legend like this. Well, it's not an urban legend anymore, is it? It's urban fact. And yet, I definitely saw someone. Could any of you tell who it was? Mm, they had, like, shoulder-length hair. Uh, from a fuzzy picture like that? No way. If I had to guess, just a random throwing the stone in the pool, it's the kid from that elementary school, and there's this scary feeling I've got that it's Nanako for some reason, but surely we'd know if she was the one who was congratulated by a politician and stuff, right? Like, Dojima would have been all over that, and she would have told us, so I don't know, but then I can't... And this is like Spacey Girl or someone else. Like, no, no one really comes to mind. How about the regular TV? Has anyone become famous around here lately? I did notice that when the camera zoomed in on the TV, it looked like a woman. But from afar, when we had that angle shot of us, you know, just standing in front of the TV, it looked like a kid. So I don't know what to make of that. And I'm nervous about yesterday as well. The delivery man thing? What the heck is that all about? No, it just seems dodgy. Hmm, I can't think of any offhand. I suppose there was that politician who visited to quell the rumors about the fog. His statement was read on TV. There we go, Nato and I on the same wavelength, of course. But the chances of him being the one are slim. He returned immediately to the city after his inquiry. And I'm pretty sure that was a female on the screen. And I'm thinking back to who I'm assuming is Namatame. I don't know why I think it's him. But uh, the guy who was scribbling in front of the TV. Uh, I don't know what that was all about. I think he was coming through a catalog of something. A, a politician, it looked like. I can't, I can't quite remember. I'm forbidden from re-watching previous episodes uh, after I've edited them. So, I mean, it's a self-imposed rule and... Uh, Heard comments in the past, you know, don't, don't rewatch stuff in the past, uh, you know, you pass that now, you gotta rely on your memory. I'm like, okay, fine, that's what the cork board's for, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, so I don't know what that, uh, has anything to do with in terms of relevance, but hopefully we find out sooner rather than later. Huh, what's the matter? Oh yeah, they stuck you with the midnight shift for falling asleep on the beds and housewares. <laughs> what does he have to do, stock the shelves? I told you to use the TV in the electronics department, right? Did you remember to check it out? How rude! I made a promise with Nanako-chan, and I'm serious about living! <laughs> From what I saw, wasn't the person on TV last night pretty small? Okay, so, yeah. Teddy's saying that they were small, too. So that does lean into the fact that it's whoever the politician spoke to. But they didn't appear on the TV, from what I remember. I don't know. It was too blurry to make out any details, including how tall or short they were. And I just, just... I think maybe I'm just thinking on a meta level, like we're getting closer and closer to the end, so if they want to pull high stakes... It was probably just a dream, or your imagination. Okay, I'm just gonna... Let's just relax for now, that's fine. Either way though, did you sense anyone in that world? Whoever goes in there, we're gonna save them anyway. Nope. No one's come so far. Then we might have to wait one more night and see. Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Good thing it looks like the rain will keep up all night. Don't forget to check again later on. Alright. That's a deal. Well, we could have bought the Kotatsu, but I guess not. Hey, I'm back. Hey, you're back. Where did you sleep? Welcome place? back! Dad, the Kotatsu's broken. Can me and Big Bro go buy a new one? The Kotatsu? 
Oh, it's already that season, huh? Yeah, the weather has been odd lately. Hmm. All right, I'll leave it up to you. Get whichever kind you want. Oh, well, I already had the money. I didn't realize we probably should have asked for permission to buy a new one. But yeah, sure. Is that a letter? It's for you, but... For me? Oh, God. What does it say? The letter is addressed to Mr. Sowaku Sr. Is this a reminder? Don't risk you anymore. But the name and address of the sender are nowhere to be found. There are no stamps or postmarks on it. So they delivered it straight to our door. Or to our mailbox, I should say. There's only one sentence. If you don't stop this time, someone close will be put in and killed. Uh-uh. Dojima's looking over our shoulder. If you don't stop this time, someone close will be put in and killed. Okay, so... Whoever's in there now... is not someone close. So... But if we do go in and rescue, someone close will be put in and killed. Could he have sent another warning because another person appeared on the Midnight Channel? Hey! What the hell is this? I don't know. It was addressed to me. I've got no idea. Not often we get letters with no return address on them. No. To be honest, I'm kind of suspicious of the delivery person last night. Nadako, did you get a good look at them? So, I was right. About what? Be straight with me. You're involved in the case, aren't you? Uh, it's not what it looks like. I'm one of the good guys. What are you up to? I am saving lives. Tell him the truth. This is no time to joke around, especially with a police officer. And if we're getting letters addressed to our house, I'm putting Dojima and Nanako in danger, so the jig is up. You decided to tell him the truth. So you're not going to be honest with me? I fucking told you the truth! I've been treating you like family. That's why I never questioned you on this. No, 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 I'm not sus. This is not what it looks like, Dojima, I swear. But I see that was a mistake. I should have intervened much earlier because I care for you. You don't think I'm the killer, do you? I will have the truth from you today. Or you don't think I'm helping the killer, do you? D Dad? We'll continue this somewhere else. But I'm not letting you leave until I'm convinced. Oh, God. This is for your own good. Got that? Okay, I understand. Let's have a conversation about this. It's all right. We're not fighting. Yeah, just a simple misunderstanding, Nanako. I promise I'm not here to hurt you. I'm big bro. We'll be right back, so don't wait up for us to get to bed, okay? No, no, no. I think... I think she should come with us. Nanako is scared. Uh... No, we can't leave her by herself, Dojima. Come on, dude. You know this... We'll be back soon. Okay. I'll be waiting. Yep. We're gonna be fast, right? Later that night, at a room inside the police station. Oh shit. This is just wrapped up. Adachi, we're I'll friends, hold on right? To this. Oh god. You took away your cell. Now speak up. What have you gotten yourself into? Well, you see, back in April, my hand went through the TV. And ever since then, I've been saving people from the world within, so to speak. What was that warning letter about? Why would you be sent something like that? Okay, so now the letter said don't go in or someone will die, right? Which means I, I wouldn't send that to myself if I was suspicious, would I? Tell him the whole truth. Ugh, but he's not going to believe me. But making up an excuse is even worse. What do I do? I 
seriously don't know. Like, what do you do in this instance? Tell them the whole truth. That's all we can do. We can prove it. What we have to do is just go find a TV. You decide to explain everything to him. Persona? Yeah. You say, Persona! And then your Persona appears. You know, and I have multiple of them. There's this long nose guy. He, he sometimes messes up his fusions but and whatnot, but sometimes it's People good. People going inside a TV? Okay, would I really make up such a wild, unbelievable story at a time like this? <sighs> Do you seriously think my imagination is going into overdrive right now in an interrogation room, Dojima? I thought you'd finally tell me what's really going on here. Oh my god, I've got the straightest face of all time. Enough. That's enough. I guess half a year wasn't long enough for you to trust me like your old man. It's not like that, Dojima. We are good buddies. We have Max. You're gonna pour me coffee. Remember, you gave me a mug. I haven't written my name on it yet, but it's my mug. And you're supposed to fill it with coffee. And you're supposed to believe your nephew when he says things like this. But I'd hoped you'd open up to me a little. God, this is always such a frustrating trope when you have to say the truth and they're just like, going inside the TV, huh? I mean, like, sure, yeah, it sounds unbelievable, of course, you have to put yourself in Dojima's shoes. He's a detective, he needs rational, like, he needs hard evidence, so to speak, similar with Naoto. That's why Naoto had to do that whole gambit, just to prove her point of, like, what's going on, but, oh, God. It's a shame. Stay here for the night. And Nanako's by herself at home? When we got that letter? Like, I feel like this is their chance to go and grab that collateral and to hold it over us. Like, okay, you better not go in. I've got Nanako right here with me. And if you go in, I'm seriously going to murder her right now. You know? We've, we've literally given the killer an opportunity. Whoa, sorry. Uh, Dodger, you're right there. Dang. Go inside TVs and personas, huh? Well, you can't blame him. Come on. You've got an imagination, don't you, Adachi? I mean, sure. I want to believe you. But... And I know Dojima-san brought you here and asked you those questions because he wants to believe you, too. Plus, you know, you'll be safe here. It's not about being safe. I'm not worried about myself. I'm worried about Nanako. Right now. He probably freaked out once he saw that letter and thought he had to protect you. I mean, yes, that is true, but I wish he would believe me. Like what a father would do for his son. I think he cares for you a lot. Yeah, I know he does. It's just... I don't like having my hands tied right now. So, yeah, don't take it so hard. Thanks. <laughs> you know, Dojima-san started looking into people involved with the first case again. The Mayumi Yamano case? Guess he wasn't satisfied with the way the case wrapped up after all. I wasn't even in town. That's why he's even more sensitive about this and that. <laughs> I better shut up now before I get chewed out again. Was that him just like knocking door? Adachi, get out of here! Alright, I'll be just outside. If you need anything, let me know. I need a TV. Thank you. Okay. Well, there's a TV remote on the disc. Meanwhile, at the Juness Grocery Department. Uh, why do I have to pitch in with stock duty? <sighs> it's because I'm not working hard enough. There's no getting around it. So who was trying to call me on my cell phone just then? And you're proud of that because... I'm so nervous. <laughs> why am I taking care of you anyways? I shouldn't have bought you this. Hang on to it, okay? It's your own cell. Oh, Teddy's got his own cell phone. <laughs> I've entered the information age! Oh my god, he's gonna be handing out his number to any person he sees. We'd get worried if we couldn't reach you. That is true. We need to keep an eye on this guy. Hopefully there's a find my phone, like, app on it, but obviously this is 2011, so... And it's just a flip phone, It's right? just a cheap kids model, though. No. <laughs> Thank you, Yosuke. That is pretty cool of Yosuke, just like, you know what, Teddy? I'll buy you a phone. And Teddy's great. So to use it, press this button. Nice to hear. 
Uh, scrap that. Watch, I'll show you how I use mine. It even looks like him. <laughs> the phone. Oh. You gotta flip it like a cool guy. Yosuke didn't do it. I usually do it. He's not picking up. Oh, he's the one trying to call me. It's raining right now, so I was gonna remind him about the Midnight Channel. Does he not hear it because he's out? No. I'm unreachable. Uh, I want to go to Nana-chan's place. I promised to play with her lots. Yes, go there. Go there now. Protect her. We're not going. And go put those snacks back. Damn it, Yosuke, my partner! It's already dinner time, so save him for your next visit. Shouldn't you have come visit me anyway and remind me of the Midnight Channel since you can't reach me on my cell phone? Oh, I get you. If he's out, that means Nanako-chan might be home alone. There we go. Oh man, it's like I just transmitted it to Yosuke even though this game was published literally eight years ago. He's listening to me. He's listening to me right now in 2020. I feel bad to think of her staying home all alone. Exactly. Especially with a killer still on the loose. We could go take her some dinner. Please, 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 please. Please, 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 please go. Okay, okay, I hear you. Jeez. So we can go? Yes! Sweet! You're so mature, Yosuke! My heart just skipped a beat because of your thoughtfulness! <laughs> Hang on a sec, I'll try calling again. I wish Dojima would even answer. And just be like, uh, he's been detained at the station. Still not picking up. I suppose he wouldn't do that in case my friends were involved as well, so... Oh, duh. I forgot to try his home line. <laughs> really wants to get hold of me, and I appreciate that. Hey, Nanako-chan? Um, is your brother home? No. He got a weird letter, and Dad saw it and got angry. Ooh, the music's changed to the creepy one. He took Big Pro to the police station. W wait, wait, what? He got taken to the police station? Yep. Stop blabbering and let me talk, too! <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> this is your Teddy speaking. Did you have to greet her like that? Let's get together and eat snacks again. Well, completely disregards the fact that I am under arrest. Weird letter. We'll go check up on your brother and dad. So don't worry, okay? No, no. Split up. One of you go look after Nanako. The other one, come free me from my prison. Teddy, dress up as an attorney or something. Wait, was it another warning letter? Did he get a second one? Yes, put the pieces together, Yosuke, I know you could do it. And Dojima-san saw that, so he took him to the station? Yes, you're getting closer, yes, yes, yes. Teddy, give me the phone back, I need to call the others. I'm just waving my hand like a madman. Meanwhile, at the room in the police station. Come on, what's that remote for? The time passes slowly. That's the sound of midnight, right? It's midnight. It was raining outside when you got here. Something may appear on the midnight channel. Don't I need to turn off the lights? I guess I just need to stand in front of it. Okay, now, now, now it's not looking good. Someone appeared. It's blurry, but you can see a small silhouette. It's a girl. Most likely someone in grade school. This is... Nanako! Yes, I fucking said so! You can't see her clearly, but there's no way you would mistake Nanako, whom you see every day. Nanako is on the Midnight Channel. Dojima! Dojima! Your uncle Dojima took away your cell phone. There's no way to contact your friends right now. I- Where's my phone call? I'm under arrest! Meanwhile, elsewhere. Oh, there's so much going on! Oh my god, this is a pivotal point in the freaking story. Poor thing. I'll put you at ease soon. Meanwhile, on the road to the Dojima residence. Wasn't go, go! On the midnight channel just now? Go, 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 go! I know what you're thinking, but Nanako chan does fit the pattern. What? How? She wasn't seen, but she was heard. Seriously? It, all it takes is your voice now? What? Do you remember the politician who visited a local school and made the news several times? Of all people he spoke with! In those interviews, he always quoted a particular student he spoke with. But he quoted her, he didn't even use her voice, he didn't have a soundbite, right? The child became well known while remaining anonymous. 
That girl was Nanako-chan. That is an oxymoron sentence. A reporter who took interest in this released her photo and interview using her real name in today's evening paper. Oh, fuck's sake. But even before that, this is a small rural town. Her identity must have been circulating for quite some time. And it and no one thought to tell me her big bro or Dojima? Oh God. I should have realized it much sooner. But I was hung up on the idea of people who were shown on TV. It didn't occur to me that this would qualify. I have to admit that was with me as well. What, what are we gonna do? Nanako-chan's home alone right now, isn't she? Exactly! I'm on my way there as we speak to check on her. What about you guys? You guys got scooters. Yosuke Senpai is heading to the police station. He said he called Kanji-kun too. They'll explain the situation there. All right, I'll join them right away, and I'll let Yukiko and Risei-chan know. Exactly, go, 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 yes, go. Yes, please do. Form the squad sometime later in a room at the police station. Holy shit, this is hmm? getting intense. What are you guys doing here? It's a prison break. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I didn't say you could go in there. Nanako-chan's missing! Oh, for fuck's sake. What? What do you mean? What do you think I mean? You left her alone, you dickhead! N Naoto's on the phone, calling from Nanako-chan. I mean, your house. Shirogane, you there? What the hell's going on? I'm at your house right now. The front door is open and there's no one inside. <sighs> I'm afraid that Nanako-chan has been kidnapped by our serial killer. Surely you must have known, Dojima-san. The case isn't over yet. No, no, no. Dojima wouldn't have... I mean... Okay, let's let's think about this. Uh, no. I don't think Dojima set this up to give our killer a chance to go after his own daughter. I think that's too much. I think that's way too far for Dojima. So... I am 90% convinced it's not him. This is the KJ Customer Service Center. The number you have dialed is unavailable right now. The phone may be switched off or outside our coverage area. I didn't even realize Monica. there's a laptop in here. Dojima-san. Is this true? Has Nanako really been... Why are you looking at me? I've been here this entire time. We have to hurry. Why? Why, Nanako? I don't fucking know, but they're gonna pay. Um, it's probably because the media... What are you doing? Traffic Division, Ota speaking. There's been a kidnapping. Get your man on it immediately. Start with checkpoints along the highway. Checkpoints? Um, could you explain the situation a little more? Kidnapping! Quit griping and get to it! The victim's a seven-year-old girl! My daughter! Your daughter? Wait, what about the scene? What makes you think this is a kidnapping? That's... Look, this could be connected to that multiple murder case. We're being proactive and better safe than sorry. Connected? <laughs> but we caught the killer. Stop fucking giggling. How long has she been missing? Have you received any notices or ransom letters? We've received threats. No, but... Damn it, there's no time for this right now. You're a traffic cop. Dojima's a detective. What's so hard to understand? Um, all right. I'll try contacting each of the departments. Jesus Christ. Even if you tell them this is connected to the murders, we can't prove it. It's still a kidnapping. It doesn't have to be connected to the murders. If someone's kidnapped, you still set up checkpoints to find them. And everyone on the force thinks this case is over and done with. Where are you going? This could be another case. It doesn't matter if it's connected to the serial killings or not. I'm gonna go look for my daughter. God damn it, why is the police department so incompetent? If this is connected to that murder case, the top brass won't accept the facts until it's too late. I'm not gonna wait for those clowns. But do you even have any ideas or leads on who took her? If they used a car, there's no way- Shut up! That's why I'm hurrying! Dojima left by himself. Does that mean I'm free to go? <laughs> <sighs> what am I gonna do? Dojima-san's run off half-cocked. He's your partner! Help him! Help us! Adachi-san, we'll go look for her too. So please, let him go! Huh? You know I can't. So what's going on? 
we will overpower you. Whoa, hey, if I let all you guys in here, then I'm really in trouble. Everyone's in fucking trouble right now. Besides, we don't even know if this thing's... Quit your bitching! Now ain't the time for that shit! Kanji, beat him up. We're all going. The hell are we sitting here for when this guy's family's in danger? Thank you! You gonna own up if something happens? Huh? Kanji-kun! No, he's right. I know how you feel. But if you don't tell me what's going on, there's really nothing I can do. I have literally said everything. Ah, so you agree to release him once we explain the situation? Very well, then. Uh, no, that's not what I meant. Got him. On a deal. Done. In any case, if we run out blindly, we'll have no idea where to begin. Let's all take a moment to stop and sort out the situation. Perhaps this will help Adachi-san understand as well. <sighs> okay, alright, okay. There's no doubt in my mind that this is a kidnapping by the same culprit who was behind the others. Uh-oh, is this the time where we try to deduce who the culprit is? Okay, hang on. There's no doubt that this is a kidnapping by the same culprit who was behind the others. Right. Now, consider that the front door at Nanako-chan's house was open. Yes. I examined it and found no trace that entry had been forced. Which is unfortunate because we know that Nanako will open the door no matter who it is. Oh, wait, hang on. <sighs> didn't she say that she didn't open the door for strangers, but she did open the door for the delivery man? Was that because I was home? Could be. But unfortunately, whatever the case, I think Nanako opened the door because she thought it was safe to do so. You mean Nanako-chan opened the door herself? Precisely. So, are we... If I remembered correctly that she doesn't open the door for strangers unless someone's home, does that mean that she recognized who it was? Who was it? The culprit didn't sneak in. He came boldly up to the front door and pressed the doorbell. The voice before where he said, you know, you're in my custody now or whatever. He said, it's not a voice we've heard before. So, well, I don't think it is. It's not Dojima, doesn't sound like Adachi, doesn't sound like Nanako herself, so probably cross her off the list too. We're really narrowing the suspects down. Okay, so does that mean Namat Namatame? Because he's always been on our list this entire time? And he's just been standing there and he's got his own portrait? Like how it was for all of us. Um, for all of us? Yeah, but they opened the door and no one was there and then they got taken from behind, so what the heck is up with that? But the circumstances are different for her, as compared to us. Remember what Nanako-chan said when we were at the hot springs? I always do what my dad tells me, like not opening the door for strangers. Okay, good. I thought I remembered that. Right. So, it was someone she recognized, but who? I don't think she'd recognize Namatame, right? Would it be a teacher? At her school? Uh, who else would she recognize off the top of my head? She would recognize Adachi, but he was here with us. She recognized her father. Uh, the singer? No, it was a ma it was a male voice. So we can cross out all female suspects, which I don't think I only had one anyway. So is it an NPC then? Uh, hmm. Why don't some of us jump into the TV world right now and see if we can catch them and intercept them, right? Because we've literally caught them at the at the time of the kidnapping, which I think only happened one other time, which was with Rize. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find her in the TV world until we gathered clues, right? But surely, if we go into the TV world now, we can catch the killer before or as he goes into the TV world, right? So is the killer... Someone Nana-chan knows? Senpai, do you have any insight into this possibility? Well, I've been in here this entire time. So technically I shouldn't even know about the person who kidnapped her and, the, and his voice. Someone at school, a friend of Dojima's, I don't know. I'm gonna go with friend of Dojima's because someone at her school seems a bit much for them to come visit her at her house. And I feel like we know some of Dojima's friends, maybe? Friend of Dojima's? Eh, probably not. Dojima-san pretty much keeps to himself at the station. You're like his only friend. 
which would make me really suspect you if we didn't have that alibi and the fact oh sorry the, the person who said that he had Nanako and the fact that you're here unless we're dealing with multiple killers but like I said Adachi's been here this entire time I'm pretty sure so he's not the one who went up to the door someone else went to the door which means she recognized that person the only one Nanako-chan might know would be me his partner exactly uh, I've been here this whole time of course of course you have have you? I don't even know, because I've been here in this room this entire time, haven't I? Hmm... I don't think we can limit ourselves to people Nanako-chan knows. Unless that's what happened. I've been here this whole time when Adachi left, he quickly went off and kidnapped her! Okay. Let's cross off Dojima. Let's cross off Nanako. <laughs> she wouldn't kidnap herself. Uh... Da -da 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 -da. So we've got Adachi, we've got Namatame. I don't have my corkboard with me, so I'm just relying on my memory right now. We've got the singer, but we can cross her off because that was a female. Unless, like I said, there's multiple killers. I need to deal with the fact that there could be more than one. Hmm. If only because of the fact of the uh, ringing the doorbell or no one's at the door, but then someone's at the back. In which case, I can't rule out a dodgy. Just yet. So maybe he kidnapped her, passed her off to the other killer? You know? Potentially. Because... Because I'm pretty sure Adachi had an alibi as well for when, uh, I think it was Rize got kidnapped. But I do distinctly remember him standing inside the house, and we didn't see Rize at that time. So I was wondering, well, maybe he kidnapped her then and there, but I don't know. And he has been- he's been really suspicious, I have to say. Like, the whole walking into the food court, mumbling to himself, and accidentally spilling details of the case has always been suspicious to me. But, I don't know. I don't know. I agree. Then let us change our perspective slightly. Sorry, I should, I should progress the story. I just thought it would be theory time, randomly, because I'm so concerned. We know for certain that the culprit must be using a large screen TV. Right, because they need to fit into it. Huh? TV? What? Each victim was taken at a different scene, yet was thrown into a TV almost immediately after being kidnapped. So we should all go into the TV world right now. But we can't fit in this TV though, we're gonna need to go to Juness. I would go as far as to say that it took place in front of their houses. What, so they brought a portable TV with them? Therefore the culprit must be taking a TV with him as he goes. Huh. So how would you do that? You'd have to... You can't just carry it along with you, so you'd need to put it in a vehicle. Like a truck, I guess. You think he's using a car? Mmm, it'll, it'll be weird to have it in your back seat and throw someone into the back seat. So I'd think like a van or a truck. Given the efficiency of the culprit's methods, I would assume a vehicle larger than a sedan. However... Can I just say how much I appreciate Nalto right now? I feel like she's spoon-feeding me. She's just like, this is what's going on. Here you go, whack. Open your mouth, eat your greens. This is this. This is the next step. I didn't even consider the fact that the culprit would be taking a TV with them. I was thinking, you know, the TV was nearby, like in the shopping district. We had uh, Kanji and we had Rize there. And, uh, you know, there was probably like a TV on display in the shopping district, but then I think about it now. All the shutters are closed, so there's no TV for them to use. Should have thought about them probably bringing a TV along. Damn it. No unusual vehicles have been sighted. I'd expect someone to notice, since most of the victims vanished during the day. Okay. Well... It's... <laughs> Is, could you classify a van or a truck as unusual? Probably not. I probably wouldn't have spared a second glance at it if it was there. Now that I think about it, I can't remember if there's been any vehicles around. it will be cool to see if there were, but I can't now. So it's someone Nanako-chan knows who has a car, but it's a car that can't be seen? Okay, I don't think it's an invisible wagon or something. I think it's just an inconspicuous vehicle. I think we can rule out the possibility that no one happened to see the vehicle. Especially since it's happened so many times now. I can't remember. I don't remember seeing cars or vehicles. Like, I would notice, right, in the shopping district? Because there's no cars there normally, I don't think. A car no one would notice? Is there such a thing? What would it be? Just a regular truck or van. A white van. 
Police car, taxi, delivery truck, black compact. We've said it's bigger than a sedan, so we can rule out a police car. We can rule out a taxi and a compact. So, delivery truck, done. That's right. Now I remember. You remember being taken to a delivery truck? A delivery came. It was a delivery truck. The delivery man from yesterday. No one looks twice at a delivery truck, no matter where it's parked. Does he count as a stranger because she saw him yesterday? And if it were a local company, it'd be the same delivery man every time. So he's not a stranger to Nanako-chan. That guy at the concert! He was a delivery man! That's the uniform of a delivery man, right? I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there, but I, it makes sense now. I thought that was kind of like hospital scrubs or some sort of maintenance man. But no, it could be a delivery person. She must have received packages from him during the times she was home alone. Meaning we wouldn't know his face. Hadachi-san, is there anyone who fits this profile? Damn it! I didn't think I put a the delivery man on my corkboard, but I don't know what the delivery man looks like. A profile formed by a bunch of kids talking it over? Yes. Uh, let's see. A delivery company, huh? I don't know. Take it from a detective. I think this is gonna be a lot more difficult than- Just answer the question! Hey! What? Maybe you're not too far off base. Oh, what do you know? We're an investigation team. Dojima-san put this stuff together to reinvestigate the first case. The murder of that announcer. I gotta say, Naoto probably did a lot more work here than I did, so <laughs> there's that. And there's a delivery man mentioned right here. Really? I better go tell Dojima-san. Go. After resigning from his last job, he took up the family delivery business. Before that, he was a council secretary. Namatame? Taro Namatame. Aha! The Anka singer's husband! Hmm. All we know about him is his occupation, but I'd say that's enough of a lead to tell us where to go next. And he's always been loitering around the shopping district like a m madman. But then... Oh, I guess he was just faking his grief this entire time. The address is... it's not far from here. I give him the clue and he still finds an excuse to chew me out. <laughs> is he gonna be okay? The killer's not just a normal guy. Nana-chan! We gotta go into the TV! Adachi-san! Bring us a flat screen. If there's been a break in the case, I'd better hurry to the scene. I'll just have to hope nothing happens here while I'm gone. I didn't see anything. You did not see anything. We are not the criminals you're looking for. Adachi-san. Let's go to Namatame's place. Dojima-san's probably on his way now. Man, my heart's racing. <laughs> Here we go. An anime's playing, so you know shit's serious. Is that Namatame? Delivery truck. Hang in there, Nanako. Daddy's coming for you. Okay, Dojima, don't crash the car or anything, please. Shit. Oh god. Oh jeez. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Shit man, this is so intense. <laughs> So why'd you do it? Oh god, no! I hope she's not in there. Oh wow, we're in the what shopping the? district. Hey, is that smoke? Let's go. An accident? <gasps> run, 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 run! Dojima-san, are you alright? Where's Nanako? Look, look! Hello? We need an ambulance! Quickly, there's been an accident! One adult male is injured! That's right, I should call backup too! We gotta find Namatame! Nanako... Where, where's Nanako? <gasps> what happened?! So, one person look at the truck! was on my way to Namatame's house when I saw him drive past me. Dojima, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. I gave chase, and he... Damn it. 
And where's Nanako? And Namatami. Find them. Uh, please. Yep, yeah, we're on it. We're on it. But how? Oh, yeah. Maybe there's clues in the truck. Wait, you can't. We need to preserve the scene. No, we have to go in. Then allow me. If it rains again while we wait, the information we need will be lost regardless. Yeah, Nalto's technically back up. Look! There really is a TV in there! Hmm. Yes, large enough for persons of any size to fit through. So it doesn't need to be plugged in, it just needs to be there. I guess that's why I kind of didn't think that they brought it along with them. I also recovered a diary from the driver's seat, most likely kept by Namatame himself. What he was scribbling this entire time. I learned the existence of a new world, thus I must save people. What? Save? The hell's he mean by that? <gasps> this... it's a list of the victim's home addresses. So... What does he mean by save? By throwing them into the TV, he's trying to save them? Save them from what? Mayumi Yamano, Saki Kanishi, Yukiko Amagi, Kanji Tatsumi, Rise Kujikawa. Even the victims who survived and were never released to the public are written here. So he's involved? I note that Mr. Moraoka's address is absent from the list. Because he was not a victim of the serial killer? Wow. And that settles it. The last date is today's. I can't believe such a small child appeared on it. I must save this child no matter what. So he thinks like the TV's calling out to him and he's just like, well, I must go and do my duty. Find the victim and throw them into the TV world. Is that about Nanako-chan? I managed to take her to safety. The police have been active lately. This will probably be the last time I write in this diary. I've done everything I can. It's clear now. He used the same trick on all the victims. He just ring the bell like he was making a normal delivery, then throw the victim into the TV in his truck. Namatame is the killer. We need to go save Nanako-chan. Here, let's use this TV and. Is it still working, or did it break in the crash? Wait a sec. We don't know where we'll enter through this one. What if we end up somewhere dangerous? Well, that's why there's eight of us, aren't there? It doesn't seem like it's going to be foggy tomorrow, so we should go in tomorrow, the same way as usual. Do you really want to take that chance? But... If we fail, who's going to save Nanako-chan? I'll risk my life for Nanako. Saving her will be our top priority from tomorrow forward. We'll leave Namatame's whereabouts to the police. All right. Dojima-san. Damn it! I just want to go in now! I just want to get this over with now! Ambulance is coming. Later, in a room at the hospital. Dojima opened his eyes. It looks like he's regained consciousness. You guys. Hey. Are you alright? Damn, what a what a roller coaster of a night. I almost look like hell right now. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Nanako. Face myself music. Gets me every time. She's my reason for living. I'm not gonna let anything happen to her. If I lose her, I might as well be dead. I know, dude. I really do. <sighs> Please. Don't die. She must be so scared right now. Waiting for someone to save her. Well, her big bro's on the job. And here I am. <coughs> you did well. You, you stopped the truck. We got evidence. When she needs me most, I'm... I'm helpless. It's okay, man. Oh, the GV, you're gonna make me upset. What kind of a father am I? I can't even protect my own daughter. You can, you can. You were just looking out for her. Dochi, my son. That's why you took me to the police station. But we just, you just made a oversight. You left her alone. We shouldn't have done that. But we're going to risk you. If anything happens to Nanako, I'll make Namatame pay. Both of us will. You can save Nanako, right? 
I trust you. Please, save her for me. Of course. You're the only ones I can turn to right now. Please. Of course. We'll do everything we can. I'm not gonna tell him to get some rest. He's not gonna we get some rest. We will rescue Nanako-chan at any cost. Even if that means I have to go into the TV right now, but, you know. It no may take some time, with... but you must put your faith in us and wait for us to return with her. It'll be my top priority. Sunday the 6th. Oh, not foggy. Juness Food Court. I was like, didn't it rain for three days? Imagine if the killer, or if Namatame now that we know, if Namatame just kidnapped them on the day before it fogs and just throws them on TV before we have any chance to investigate, then we're screwed. And I thought that could be the case here. And that's why I was kind of super scared, but that's okay. It's cloudy. Juness Food Court. You can sense stronger determination than usual from everyone's expression. Nanako-chan's on the other side, right? Yes. Definitely. There's no mistake. The police should be pursuing Namatame. So let's focus on saving Nanako-chan. Yeah. We're the only ones who can. We'll save her no matter what. Damn straight. I often thought it might be impossible, but we finally cornered the culprit. We made it this far. We won't let him take Nanako-chan's life. Yeah. This is it. Let's go all out and get it done! Hmm. I made a promise with Nana-chan. I told her I'd always protect her. And I promised to play with her through the winter and the spring before I go home. I said that we'd play again and that everything would be okay. I promised her that. I know it's Nanako-chan, guys. But for us, this is business as usual. We, we're good at this. We've succeeded multiple times. We haven't failed yet. Come on. Regardless, we must do whatever we can with what we have now. We're not gonna struggle through this. This is something only we can accomplish. Come on! We can do this, guys! No problem! Exactly! Yeah, we do this the same way as always. Yep. All we gotta do is find Nanako-chan before the next foggy day and get her out of there. So let's go today. Nothing to it. Let's keep calm, be careful, and get it done. Understood. Everyone's feelings are one. Rank nine. Are we gonna max out once we save Nanako? The investigation team's social link has reached level nine. Your power to create personas of the full arcana is growing. You'll rescue Nanako before, for sure before the next foggy day. Yep, let's just go in right now. Confirm the situation. The killer was the council secretary, Taro Namatame. He was having an affair with that announcer who died first. Damn it! He kidnapped Nanako-chan, and on top of that, Dojima-san's in the hospital because of him. Dojima-san is a marvelous man. To think he'd reinvestigate the first incident after so long. Without his efforts, we may n have never discovered the culprit's true identity, leaving us in the dark once again. But back when they thought it had to do with the affair, they looked pretty hard at Namatame, didn't they? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If he was the, the main prime suspect of the first case, why didn't they uncover anything? Hmm, how'd he get away with it? Why would he have had a solid alibi for that time? Technically, according to the files, Namatame's alibi covers the night when the corpse appeared. Right, but not when the body was- or not when Mayumi Yamano was thrown into the TV world. When the cause of death is unknown, an alibi cannot be established due to the questions of when the murder occurred. When they obtained- what they obtained was not about the murder itself but an alibi for when the corpse was placed at the scene. But we don't know how the corpse appears at the scene, to be honest. Does the TV just spit them out, or what? How do they end up on the t on a high location, like a, a telephone pole or a TV antenna? That's still a mystery, how that happens. Since the estimated time of death fell within his alibi, they decided that he could not be to blame for the killing. Now, it's true that Namatame has a perfect alibi for that night. But we know the true method behind the murders. The victims aren't killed on the night the crime is committed. If he cannot pr prove his innocence for the time they were thrown into the TV, his alibi falls apart. Exactly. First Yamano-san died, then he got fired. So we thought he was as much of a victim as her. After the announcer died, Namatame was laid off from his job 
and he came back here, to his hometown. Now that I think about it, I did see him in town from time to time, but it didn't seem to be working much. Yeah. No, he was just dressed in the civilian clothes. So, that letter, Don't Rescue Anymore, came to us after he watched our concert. But how did he know that we were getting involved in the TV world? Did he recognize Teddy, perhaps? I thought it was because Nanako spilled the details because of our uh, study group that one time, but no. He must have gathered that information from the concert somehow. He probably helped out with the delivery service only once in a while. And that's why no one knew about it. But this Namatami guy has no connection to the other victims, so we have no idea why he'd want to kill them. And what was that saving thing he wrote in his diary about? Whatever it is, it's obvious this dude's been kidnapping people and throwing them into TVs. We gotta catch the bastard. Actually, I wonder where that Namatame guy escaped to. And Nanako-chan? I hope she's okay. Since we've come this far, there's no need for us to strain our brains about it. We'll rescue Nanako-chan before the fog sets it. Uh, can we go in? Do we have enough clues? I'm scared to, like, go in and figure out, oh, we don't have any clues. Waste of the day. Go back out. So, can I just go back to town and save my game? Alright, game saved. Let's go. Inter oh, let's check the weather report. The weather report? Um, let's see. Okay, we've got some time. We've got some time. Go ahead and ask any time, senpai. <laughs> yep, will do. Enter the TV. I'll do my furry best! As will we all. Oh my gosh. The most important rescue mission so far.